Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Ottawa Senators franchise mode. So in last episode we had the draft where we took Dmitry Pakanov at first overall. He is our best prospect, currently a right wing power forward, medium elite. We don't know any of his attributes, but I'm assuming he's going to be like an 82 out of the draft. Um, he's more than likely going to be playing on our second line or first line this year. Uh, maybe alternating with like Bobby Ryan or something like that. Um, and yeah, we still need a couple more forwards and some defensemen and some goalies for this upcoming season. So we're up here in free agency. I asked you guys who we should sign. Nobody really replied, but I did come up with some decisions on who I want to give contracts to. So the first one obviously is the guy I mentioned in the last video, which was Tyson Berry. Um, he is looking like an 86 and he doesn't actually want a whole lot considering we have a lot of cap space. But as you can see, his career stats, the last two years, he's been pretty solid. He put up 57 points last year, and he put up 60 points just like, well, actually 60 points last year, 57 in the first season. And it was his exact point totals from his actual season in 17-18. So he looks like he's a pretty good power play player because 15 power play points. So I'm going to bring him in so he could help out some younger guys like Bukhanov on the power play. And then maybe Bukhanov could still have a really good rookie season. Um, I'm going to give him a decent contract because I don't know if I'll be bringing people like CC back. So let's give him a three-year deal so it takes him till he's 31. And let's give him a bit more than he wants since we have a lot of cap space. So three years at 7.5. Hopefully he wants to come play here even though we're not really a contender. And then also we need some more defensemen, so I was sorting by potential. So this guy, Tyler Wotherspoon, um, he's 79 overall looking like, and he's 27 years of age. He could play on our top six pairings, so he's going to come in as that. So we're going to give him a one-year deal. Pretty much everybody else is going to get just one-year deals because Barry is somebody I want to keep around, but the rest of the guys are kind of just like short-term players. So we're going to give um, Wotherspoon... Let's see if he would take... Well, actually, that's a lot more than he wants. I'll give him one year at $2 million. Just because we don't want to be under salary cap. So, we'll take Wotherspoon. And then we will also offer a contract to... Where is he? Joachim Ryan, because he looks like an 81. So, he could help us out. One year as well for him. And we'll give you two and a half. Just to make sure you actually sign with us. There you go, Joachim Ryan. Um, and then that's our three defensemen that we need. Then we also need some forwards, uh, two of which are left wingers. So I was looking at offering a contract to, where is he? Uh, where the heck is he? he? Oh, wait, there he is. Yeah, Remy Ellie. He looks like he's an 83, but I don't think he is based on his minutes that he played last season. As you can see, he played around... Actually, last season, no, that was in the AHL, but in the season he played in the NHL, he played only 10 minutes, so he might be like a fourth line forward, um, so we're going to bring him in for one year as well, let's give him $2 million as well, he should sign with us since he's still young, so there you go, Remy Ellie, um, also I was going to offer a contract to, where is he, Martin Nuke, for maybe our third line, if Ellie's a fourth liner or something like that, We'll also give him one year at $2 million. There you go, Martin Nuke. And then also the other one I wanted was a right winger for the fourth line, and that was Zach Aston Reese because Aston Reese is a pretty solid player. And being only 25, he still has a lot of term left potentially. Um, so we'll give him one year at two and a half. I wouldn't mind giving him multiple years, but I don't know if... Um, we're going to have youngsters jumping into the NHL. So one year at 2.5 for Aston Reese. And then we're just going to need two goalies because currently we only have two AHL goalies, which is Gustafson and the guy we just drafted. Um, so we are going to offer a contract first to Keith Kincaid. I don't think he's actually an 86. I'm thinking he's like probably like an 81 or 82, but we just want to have like a kind of a lackluster year, like our youngsters we want to play good. But the rest of the team, we don't. So we'll give him one year at $3 million just because he's probably going to want to go to a playoff team. And then Alex Lyon as well, since he's young in 27, we're going to give him one year at $2 million as well. And then that should be good as long as we get those guys. 
Um, and oh yeah, I was going to also get a depth defenseman just in case we have any injuries. And that is Oscar Fantenberg, wherever he is. Where are you, Fantenberg? Oh, there you are. 77 depth defenseman, 28 years of age. We're going to give him one year at 1.750. Yeah, 1.750. And that should be good. Hopefully we get those guys. And then if so, we'll sim up to the start of year number three. And we'll probably sim till like, uh, I'd say like December 1st again or something like that if we can. So Martinuk has accepted. Ellie has accepted. Kincaid's accepted. Lyon, Aston Reese, Ryan, and Fantenberg, and Wellerspoon. So we got everybody on our team except for Tyson Berry. Oh, I forgot about him. He signed with the Flyers. God damn it. Oh, uh, well, we don't have a top defenseman yet, so we're still going to have to sign one more D-man. God damn it, Tyson. Why'd you go to the Flyers? I should have gave him more money. Well, Justin Schultz is still available. He's not bad. He's only 30 as well. Yeah, you know what? I'll give Justin Schultz one year. He could be our top defenseman. Of course, there's a lot of teams interested in him now because they probably all lost out on Tyson Berry. So give... Schultz one year at 7.5 even though that's a lot of money it's only for one year just till we get some of our youngsters growing so hopefully he actually signs with us because if we don't we, we're gonna have a really weak defensive core this year and yes he accepts for one year there you go so let's him up to next season and see what our lines look like for the preseason okay guys so here is our lines for the preseason so we got brady Tichuk alongside of colin white and dmitry Pokanov. we're just gonna see how good he is he's probably gonna be like an 82 i think so he might get first line time right away or we play bobby ryan on the top line not 100 percent sure what we're gonna do with that then we got peyton osgood who we drafted with our pick from the tampa bay lightning i don't think he's gonna be nhl ready yet uh but we might as well see what he's like for this preseason and then also Dmitry Vizhnevsky, who we drafted in the second round, he's going to be playing on our top four just to see how he is. And then our goalie prospect, who was medium elite, uh, Brandon Flower, or not Fow Flower, Fowler. Why do I keep on saying Flower? Um, he's going to be playing as backup to Lyon in the preseason. So let's see what these guys' overalls are. Hopefully they're pretty decent. Hopefully they got their actual potential and whatnot. I'm kind of curious to see how Pukhanov simulates and whatnot once he gets into the regular season because more than likely he's NHL ready at this point in time. So let's go all the way up to the end of the preseason and hopefully he is going to simulate well on that top line if he does play there. If not, I'm going to play him on the second line with like Dezingle and uh, Yanni Gord, I think. Okay, so preseason we're losing games, which is not exactly, well, not exactly what we want necessarily. We want our youngsters to play good, but... It doesn't matter if we win or not. Um, Aston Reese is back. I guess he was just injured for a short bit, but it doesn't really matter. And let's see how we end off this preseason. We finished the preseason 3-4. and four. Let's take a look at our player stats, see how Pekanov played in the preseason. Bobby Ryan played pretty good. Hopefully that continues in the regular season because he's still got two years left, so we might be flipping him at the deadline or something. Um... Okay, so yeah, Bobby Ryan, 7 points to Chuck and White. We're playing pretty good. Pekanov had 4 points. And holy crap. If he's actually that, he's looking like an 85 out of the draft. I don't think he's going to be, but 85 if he's that good. Damn, that is a huge draft pick because I've never had an 85 out of the draft. Like, most of the guys are 82s, but damn, Pekanov. Holy, sorry if I was really loud there for a second. Um, Osgood's looking like a 61 medium top six forwards. So, um, yeah, he's going to be definitely playing in, I think, the AHL, or is he going back? Yeah, he's going to be playing in the AHL this year, which is not too bad. Um, might be ready in a couple seasons. Um, and in Vishnevsky's looking like a 59 currently, but we're not 100% sure if he actually is. Um, and he's going to be playing in the AHL as well. And Fowler is looking like a 63 currently, which is not too bad, but he is 19. Okay, so now let me do uh, the actual roster editing for the season, and I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, guys, so our lines are set. So we got Tuchuk with White and Pakanov, Ryan with Dzingel and Gord, Martin Nuke with Brown and Smith, and then Aston Reese with Sissons and Ellie. I don't think Martin Nuke is still an 81 because I don't think he's better than Yanni Gord is. 
Uh, defensively, we got Chabot and CC, Schultz and Ryan, Watherspoon and Weidman. Goalies, we got Keith Kincaid and Alex Lyon, so that's where we're going to be really weak. And then Scratch, we got Fantenberg and Harper. And then I had to call up Chalapic because or else we'd be under cap space. Um, he's not going to look like he's actually going to be much, unfortunately, because in real life, he's going to be a pretty decent prospect. It's just because he's got low top nine. Um, so we're going to leave him as depth for now. Hopefully, he still gets growth. Okay, so let's start up the year three simulation. We're probably going to only go up to, like I said, December 1st or so. Um, let's actually quickly save because we've done a lot so far already with those signings and whatnot. So let's get this first NHL game underway, see how he simulates. Hopefully he could pick up a goal at least in his debut because I think we should be able to lose games. But let's see how he does in his first NHL game. First period and it is one nothing. and wow look who it is. It's Pekanov scoring his first NHL goal and we have a one nothing lead. Second period, and it is 4-3 for us. Uh, Gord, Smith, and Tuchuk have goals. And third period, and it's going to OT. And we are going to a shootout, and we lose in the shootout 5-4. to four. Um, But Pekanov had a goal at least. I don't know if he picked up an assist. Tuchuk did. So Pekanov with the goal... And yeah, he just had a goal only, but still a pretty good debut for him. Um, let me just check his individual stats as well. Um, so yeah, one goal for Pukanov. He was a plus two. He had three shots on goal already in his debut. Um, pretty decent. He took one penalty as well. Um, he did take a face off apparently as well. So there you go. Pretty good debut for Dmitry Pukanov. Hopefully he simulates like that throughout the regular season as well. Okay, so let's continue the season simulation. Um, I don't know how far we're going to get in this, maybe up to December the 1st, um, just because of the fact that, uh, like, well, actually, wait a second, I just realized we might not have all our scouts because I forgot to sign some scouts in the off season. so let me quickly do that before we actually start simulating. Um, but yeah, we're probably not going to get much of the season done. So, yeah, we do need a WHL scout and... Are you good spalling at um, a different USA? Yeah, you're good at East. So we're going to reassign him to the USA East. Um, sorry if I don't I like. I don't know if this episode's running late already because um, I kind of had to do a little bit of editing with this so, um, because of sneezing and stuff like that. Because I'm still under the weather. So we're gonna assign him to USA East, and then we're going to hire a. WHL scout and I think yeah German scout we should find one too and then I don't wait we didn't have a Russia one as well Russia would be, probably be one that we need because we want to find some more Russians for this team or players that play in Russia so a minus in Russia Hakan is a plus though so we're gonna get him for Russia um, WHL hopefully there's some scouts still left for them there's only two uh, a is not that bad. I might as well take him. So there's our WHL scout. And then we needed one for Germany. Um, Lazarov, are you good in Germany? Yes, you are. Okay, A+. plus, Nice. So we'll take him as well. So there's our scout signings for this season. Hopefully those guys help us find out some gems or something. So let's go a month at a time and then like by the end of this episode I'm going to also show you guys like the draft class and um, who's on like the trading block probably and whatnot because um, next episode's probably going to be the remainder of the season simulation. Uh, so let's go all the way up to November the 1st. So the scouts are accepting which is good. Hopefully they find some good people in the draft. Because we need some good prospects to build up this organization. So the game against the Islanders, our home opener, and we lose 5-4. to four. Game against Arizona is a 6-5 OT loss. So we're scoring a lot of goals, but we're losing games still. So, yeah, we're a good offensive team. It's just the fact that our defense is really bad, I guess. Um, so Logan Brown has inj been injured already with a separated shoulder. Let's go replace player because that will put in Philip Chalapic. Um, there's a win against Columbus for nothing. I don't want to check the draft class just yet. 
game against Pittsburgh and the Flyers. We win against the Penguins, surprisingly, but we lose to the Flyers. Kind of a weird record so far, 2-4-3. and three. Now we have a back against the Colorado Avalanche. Can we win at least one of them? Um, no, I do not want to give up a third for Zach Cassian and two-fifths. That's pretty disgusting because I'm not giving up uh, prospects and picks and stuff like this at this stage. And damn, Brady to Chuck has been injured with a strained hamstring. Let's just go replace players as well because I want us to simulate kind of bad in a way. He won't be out that long, just like a week or so. So we are 3-5-3 three, and three here at November the 1st. So let's take a look at how Pakanov is playing. In the, wow, okay, the Zingle is over a point per game. It's kind of unrealistic, but okay. Let's just take a quick look at Pakanov. I want to see him first. Six points in 11 games. He's a minus two, but he's got 30 shots on goal already in uh, on goal in 11 games. That's pretty insane. Uh, four goals, two assists for him. So he does shoot the puck a whole lot. So hopefully he picks up quite a few Mike Morris for shards in the future or something. 62206. I think he might have put on a little bit of weight. And he's in, actually an 83. But that's still probably our best forward, I think, because of how weak of a team we are. Um, goalies are playing like crap, which is what I was expecting. Lyon seems to be getting a bit more ice time than Kincaid even. And Kincaid's in really bad. Just probably because of our defensive core. So, yeah, we're going to go to, I think, January the 1st. Yeah, let's just uh, do a quick sim all the way up to January the 1st. And then we'll check all the other stuff, and then that'll be it for this episode. So here we go, starting off November. Let's see how we play. We got a game against LA to start it off. Can we beat them? Uh, no, we do not. We let in a lot of goals again, which is not a surprise. Uh, Marcus Nermi has been injured in the AHL. Let's go replace player. And Joachim Reinen has been injured with a sprained ankle. God damn, that's our third injury on the four, or well, on the team. Uh, multiple players are eligible to be dressed. So Brady to Chuck is back in the lineup. Fantenberg was playing forward. Damn, that's pretty bad. Um, so there you go to Chuck in there. Um, who else is back from injury? Oh wait, Chlapik is going to be... Replaced by Logan Brown. Yeah, Logan Brown is back, and he's up to an 82. Nice. That's good. Eventually, he'll take over the Zingle spot. Um, defensively, who was it? Yeah, Ben Harper was our depth guy. And Fantenberg. Well, actually, Fantenberg was the depth guy. So I guess we'd still have one injury on defense. Yeah, Joachim Ryan's still out. Game against Toronto, and we beat them 3-2 to two somehow. Stop offering me stupid trades, computer. I don't really want to give up my picks right now. Because this team is going to be a, probably a pretty bad team. Who knows? We have won three in a row, though, surprisingly. Um, Eric Gustafson is on waivers. I'm going to decline that. Uh, ben Harper is back. But he was already in the lineup anyways. 7-7-3. Seven, seven, and three. Somehow we're winning games. I don't know how. Uh, CC has been injured with a mild concussion. Let's go replace player. That's only for four days, but it's still one of our top three defensemen. There's a shootout loss, and Marcus Nermi is back. Sorry if there's so much like uh, line changes and whatnot. It's just because of the amount of injuries. Um, so Nermi, I think, was playing. Maybe where Rec was playing. Uh, maybe not. What position does Nermi even play? Oh, wait, it was where Reinhardt was, yeah, because I took Reinhardt out, I think. Yeah, Nermi was playing here. How is Osgood playing in the minors so far? He's got six points, and he's a plus one. Pretty solid. Um, 63 overall, top six forward. That's not bad. Um, Rask is up to a 68. Nice. Okay, so some of these guys are playing pretty good down there in the minors. Fowler is actually a 56, but... He is simulating pretty decently so far. Gustafson's up to a 72, so maybe he's ready by next season or something, or two seasons from now. Okay, game against the Devils and the Stars. And Cody Cece is back. Damn, there's too much line changes I have to make and whatnot. Hopefully you guys are not getting bored, and hopefully this episode isn't really long. Like I said, I have to make a lot of changes to this episode because of... 
like my dad came home mid recording so I kind of had to pause it and whatnot. Ben Harper is out and Joachim Ryan you're in and there you go game against the Devils can we beat them no we do not and then we lose to the Dallas Stars Ryan's already in our lineup so it's all good we might only go to December the first actually yeah, I think we're going to only go to December the 1st because this episode's probably running long. So, last game is against... Wow, Cernak has been injured. It's against Boston, and we lose that. So, we are 7-13-5 at November the 1st, technically. Um, so, not off to a great start, um, but that's okay because as long as our youngsters are playing decent. Let's take a look at the player's stats. Okay, so leading us in points is Colin White currently with 19 points in the first 25 games. And wow, okay, already in his rookie season, Dmitry Plakhanov has 16 points in his first 25 games. Uh, Dezingle also 16 points. Bobby Ryan 16 points. Zach Smith and Hachuk 15 points. So it looks like we're getting a lot of depth point scoring, which is pretty nice. Looks like everybody's picking up points somewhat. Yeah, everybody has a point, even the depth guys, so not a bad start to the season, even though we're below 500. Um, and in goaltending, that's our only issue right now, because Kincaid has been dropping the ball, even though he's better than Lyon in overall. Like, Kincaid's 3-10-5, while Lyon somehow 4-3-1, even though Lyon is a 76 in comparison to Kincaid's 81. Um, let's quickly check also the AHL stats. How is our youngsters playing down there? So Osgood's got 10 points in 19 games and is a plus 3, so not too bad way to start off for his AHL career. Uh, Calfoot's got 6 points. Uh, who else? cernak has got 5 points. Bergman's got 4 points. Bull has 3 points. Vishnevsky, 3 points. Rask, one point, and Honka, one point. In terms of the goalie prospect, Gustafson's playing pretty bad, and Fowler's playing pretty interesting. 1-1-3 one, one, and three with a 9.04 save percentage and a 2.92 goals against average. So that's how we're looking so far. Let's take a look at the draft class and that sort of stuff as well. Let's just quickly look at the standings. How are we in the Atlantic Division? We are currently the second worst team, but we do have a game in hand over Detroit. Well, they have a game in hand, actually. Um, so, yeah, we're probably one of the worst teams it's looking like right now. Yeah, I think we're currently... Let's see. Yeah, we're like the second worst team in the league currently, so that's good. Um, I don't know what's clicking for us, if it's the power play or what. Let's just take a look at this sort of stuff, even though we're not even almost done the season at all. Uh, power play percentage, how are we on the power play? Looks like we're one of the worst actually on the power play. Yeah, we're all the way down here at 15.2%. Pelling kill is not doing that bad, but still not that good either. Wow, and we're horrible on home ice. Okay. So final thing is the draft class, and that'll be it for this episode. I don't know how long this episode has been because like I've had to make a lot of editing and stuff so um, hopefully it's not too long for you guys. So draft class, I'm not going to show you guys the train block I don't think, well maybe actually I will. Um, so Wade Ranger is the top prospect currently, a center two way forward, interesting. There's also this McPherson guy but I don't know anything about him because apparently he's in the Swiss League. Like I said there was nobody there but this guy is there. Christian McPherson. There's also Darren Slaney. That looks pretty good. Topi Vitoloma. Pierre Talbot. That guy looks pretty good as well. And Frederick Rodin. Those are the top prospects for the draft. And it looks like it drops off considerably after that. Okay, so yeah, I'll show you guys the trading block, I guess, just in case we want to trade away Bobby Ryan in next episode. And then that'll be it for this video. <laughs> Um, so Steele and Motel, I don't think there's probably much on the block that's new. Uh, Tori Krug, but he's got three years left. Um, more older guys. Any young guys? Nick Waugh. Yeah, he's not that good. Uh, Marita. 
Yeah, it doesn't look like there's that much. Josh Hosang. Oh, Josh Hosang and Anderson are currently RFA still. Uh, Tarky and Erickson. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like there's anything too outstanding out there that we could get for Bobby Ryan, but we could probably just flip him for a draft pick if we wanted to. Um, not sure if we want to do that, though. We might just let his contract play out. Um, I think that's pretty much it. It's looking like... Because most of these guys are older guys. Osala. Um, Jonathan Deltling. That's not bad. But he's got a lot of trade value, which is the only problem. Bring him back to Ottawa because he should have been here anyways. And yeah, that is all that's on the block. Uh, so let me know what you guys think with all that sort of stuff. Um, like who we should go after in the off season, even though that's still quite a while away. What we should do in regards to trading, and what do you guys think we should do with this team? Like in like in terms of the draft, do we go after a defenseman? Do we go after like forwards? Like what type of thing do we need? Because I think Colin White and Pukanov into Chuck could be a good first line. Um, but I do think we need some more top defensive prospects, even though there is some good ones in the AHL currently. Uh, so let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys next time.